Good morning. I hope everybody's doing all right. Um, so we're going to start, but before starting, uh, just to get an idea of uh, everybody in the room, who's done unit testing before? Okay, a good amount of you. Um, and uh, who here is looking for unit testing with uh, PHP? What about JavaScript? Okay, cool, because we we're going to cover both of them today uh, as well. So uh, before we start, uh, we'd like you to uh, just go to this URL. Did you uh, tweet it or? No, I did not. Um, you should. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's short compared yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just go to this URL. It'll send you to uh, the GitHub repository uh, where all the code for today is going to be. So all that you need to do is uh, clone the repo uh, locally on uh, your computer, or just you can download the zip file if you prefer. And yeah, if anybody has any issues during anything, just raise your hand. We'll, one of the TAs or we'll come and help you out. Does everyone have the website open? So can I go to the next slide? Because I mean, um, at the footer, I have no idea if you can read it. There's the URL throughout um, the course. But yeah. Um, I hope that you read the requirements part of. I have no idea if you got an email or on the um, course description. So you can do PHP or JavaScript, and you need PHP locally, and you need some kind of uh, an editor, IDE, whatever you want to edit some text files with. Um, and you need Composer, because we use this to set up to orchestrate our dependencies, like the testing framework and other libraries. And for JavaScript, you need Node, which, sorry? No bug. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need Node, which brings you NPM. But if you prefer to use Yarn, uh, yeah, this is up to you. Um, and if you clone the repository, then yeah, you can decide for PHP and or JavaScript, and this is what you need to get all the dependencies up and running. And it would be great to just briefly raise your hand if you're done with that throughout um, what we're talking like. That you see that uh, yeah, when we're starting with the first exercise, that actually at least three fourths of you have set it up. Okay, then. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, let's get back to the actual introduction um, about testing. Yeah, uh, hello. What is testing? Well, uh, when people talk about testing, uh, many confuse unit testing with testing. Testing is a very broad concept. It is about everything that is insert, that is made to ensure that the product is right, so there is no defect in the product, but also everything that is made to make sure that we are building the right product, so that this, the requirement of the product is exactly what the product does. Just to make a funny example, this could be a test because one of the two pictures is the requirement. So one client asked us to do the, this thing 
and the other is the final product. Now, in um, there are two different, there are five differences in the picture because it seems that we did a test, we look at, we spend time looking at the two pictures and we found out that there are five differences. So the requirements are not met. So this is a test, even if it, it does not involve code, but it's a test because we ensure that the requirements are equal to the final product. Yeah, then um, if you know what a test is, then we can think about why you should concern yourself with testing. So why do we want, why should we test? Um, there are a couple of reasons. So um, no matter what you do, um, next one, you, the, the software that you produce contains defects. No matter how good you are, how much time you spend concepting and writing code and testing yourself and reviewing code, there are defects and they obviously hide. So if you know they're there, you would get something, do something about it. Um, if you have defects, this will cause failures, like the product does not behave like you want it to be. Depending on what you do, this could cost money and even kill people. I mean, not with a WordPress plugin, maybe, but in general. Um, it's, if you test, you get more confidence in your code. And also, um, the next one. <laughs> um, testing itself does not improve quality. It tells you about the current quality of your code and you know where are issues that you have to solve and then you improve the code quality. And also if you do testing right, it takes a whole amount of time to set things up, to understand things, but if you do this right and if you get started, then this will accelerate, accelerate um, your software development process. Um, one real life example, does anyone know who this, uh, what this is or what this was? So, yeah. Probably it's uh, the, uh, the Ariana 5 with the software of the Ariana 4. Yeah, exactly. This was a rocket. Um, you can slowly step through. Yeah. So this is a rocket. Um, it has some software taken from the previous rocket, um, untested. Everything else has been tested, uh, component by component, integrative tests and so on. This was great. Um, but there was differences between the two rockets. Um, that resulted in some floating point issue. Um, there was some bug in the code which yeah, produced or triggered a failure. Um, and then there was an exception handler, which is great. Uh, but that was, for whatever reason, disabled, which is not that good. Um, and then about 40 seconds or so, I think, um, yeah, the rocket destroyed itself and they yeah, that's worked out so successfully. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to talk about testable code as well. Um, the idea with, uh, whenever you start with unit testing, um, one of the common things that you might be wondering or struggle with is the idea of what what can I test? What, what are the things that are gonna, like you might feel like, oh, my code's not testable, but there's always something that you can test. You can test for return values of a function, the output, um, or other side effects. And those are really what testing is about. Um, testing isn't really about figuring out necessarily uh, is my code working right now? It's, the, well, it depends how you do it, but we're not gonna get into that. But what really you're, you're trying to figure out is you're trying to be good for like, I like to talk about future Carl. So you wanna be nice to future you and be, oh, I did this change and I broke something, but I don't remember what I was thinking back then. Well, the, the tests are there to help you prevent those situations and catch these errors that you might have not intentionally done and that would break your code or co cause crashes or things like that. And that's really what testing is about. It's about uh, making sure that the quality of your, of your code um, stays consistent and that's what testable code is about. Uh, it, 
all code is testable in some way or form. Uh, obviously, some of it is better to do than others, but at the end of the day, there's always something for you to test and to make sure that in the future, uh, you don't break it and, and cause yourself uh, headaches and problems trying to fix it and figure out what you were thinking back then. The test is there to, I kind of like documentation. Who here writes documentation? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's, so, uh, so, so, is it up to date, your documentation? <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of the idea also with documentation. Documentation isn't there for right now. Right now, like you're writing the code and you know exactly what you're doing. Documentation is there for like future you to be like, what was I thinking back then? Uh, and testing's a bit the same way. It's a way to document your talk process and catch mistakes uh, as well. So that's kind of the context with uh, unit testing. Okay, so uh, we had testing in general, and now the switch to unit testing. So um, before we actually start with what unit testing is, we want to arrange it in the greater picture. So um, we start with actually where unit testing is. Um, so there is, uh, just go to the next, um, there is an overview here. Um, so this is just one way to design your software development process. Um, it's a nice overview because you have different stages in the development, which does not mean that you have to go through the stages from top left to bottom and cannot return. This is uh, wrong, of course. Um, and unit testing is here. And you see unit testing concerns itself with the design of the units, of the modules, of the components. And you actually test the implementation. Um, and you can build on top of unit tests, integration tests. Um, you can build pretty slim integration tests and only test actually parts where the integration is concerned because you had um, unit tests before and ensured that every unit by itself is working as it should. So when you have integration, interactions between units, you only have to test that in the next level. Um, if you only take one thing from today, this slide should be it. So uh, one, one more. Um, unit testing is dynamic testing of individual units in isolation. And now we step through these three concepts, uh, one after the other. So dynamic testing, what does it mean? Um, dynamic testing means that we don't read our code like a static analysis tool. We actually run the code. When we have defects, they trigger failures. We want to find the defects we want to debug, we want to fix the bugs, and then we improve our software quality. Um, unit testing is about validation. So um, this actually means what Giuseppe mentioned before, you can step on through. Um, so this is just the definition. Um, you want to make sure that this, the requirements that you have so that your implementation actually matches what you should implement. Um, and also unit testing is white box testing. This means that um, you have to know the code because you test the finest detail level of the code. So you have to have the code and not just know what a function does. So you really have to read through the code line by line and then write a test for that. So one simple example, if this is a function, we have PHP and JavaScript code and you see here it is not obvious what language this is. So if this is a function that we want to test, then of course we have some kind of expectation. You remember the two images. Um, if we want to test if something is returning correctly or behaving correctly, then of course we have to know what the expected correct result should be. So in this simple example, this function returns a string, 42, and this is what we can expect. If we call that function, we want to have the return value of string 42. Cool, so uh, let's talk about defining uh, units of code. So um, really what you're trying to do, uh, who here comes from, I, I, I love this analogy, but who here comes from a bit of an engineering background, like electrical? Who, who's done like kind of the breadboards where you like put a circuit on one end and, and, and like test currents? So unit testing to me is a lot like that. Uh, what you're trying to figure out 
is like your code at the smallest individual level. So uh, you're trying to figure out, okay, if I put this, these variables in, what do I expect to come out at the other end? And uh, so things get can be like at the atomic level are like words, if statements, uh, logical, like any sort of logical condition. So are you trying to figure out, okay, well, if this is true, I would expect this to, to happen, and will this, uh, will this happen? And those are kind of the reasonable units or, or what you're trying to do with unit testing. You're really trying to figure out in the perfect isolation how your code is gonna behave at the smallest possible level. So you're always at the, at the function level or, or things like that. So this is a good example. Um, the, this is a good example. Uh, logic here, we're just trying to say, okay, well, if a number is greater than zero, we want to multiply it uh, by two. But uh, otherwise, we want to divide it by two. Um, and a unit here is is really one fraction of this function. So you want to test whether if I send a number greater than zero, it's going to go a certain way. And if you send a number uh, less than zero, will it behave a different way? And that's really what the units are about. Yeah. Uh, the problem with this is um, the third concept that we mentioned, like the isolation part. So you can test logic here. The problem is if you have either the first if true or false, you also have the other mathematical expression being included. This is also logic. So you cannot test only the condition in the if or only the computation in the first return or the second return. So this leads us to not having logic as a reasonable unit. So it could also be a function or a class. So this is still up to you. If you decide one function, one method is my unit or the whole component, the class, the object is my method, this is up to you, this is just fine. Yeah, um, we say unit testing is dynamic testing, but it's also testing in isolation. So what isolation means? Isolation means that um, when we, um, when at a space, so unit testing is about find bugs or find defects in the software. But when a test fails, because bugs show, this, um, show themselves as failures. When um, a test fails, we need to know which is the reason. Because if a test fails, but we don't know why, then we don't know how, uh, what we need to fix. So, uh, yeah, they took this example, then if this, this test, uh, you will get confident with the syntax if you are not already. Uh, we are testing a lot of things. So basically this is WordPress code, I hope you are familiar with that. But uh, we are testing that uh, a taxonomy exists, a taxonomy is, which is a random screen. We, we are testing that this taxonomy is hierarchical and we are um, also doing some global manipulation. Now, let's imagine that this test failed. It's not that we can really understand if the reason not failed, but also the problem is that we are using WordPress code. So, <laughs> yeah, the problem with the test is that we are uh, using WordPress code. So, if the test failed, it's because of our code or because of WordPress. It could be a bug in WordPress. So we don't really know if the, um, the test is, uh, uh, is failing because there is a bug in WordPress, because there is a bug in the test, because of the bug in our code. So testing isolation means that when we write code, we try to run only our code. So when the test fails, we know the reason why it fails. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's important when we write the code that we write good code that is, is easily testable in isolation. 
Okay, now that we know um, what is testing, why we should do it, of course we want to know how to do this right, like uh, what to test, how to write a test, so what makes a test good. Um, there's a great article by Eric Elliott which highlights five questions that every unit, component or module test should answer. The five questions are, what is it that you're testing? Then, what should it do? Like, if you're testing a component, that, that might have different methods. So, what exactly is the thing that you're testing here? And then you, of course, have this expectation, like, does it return a value, or does it output something, or does it have some other side effect, like um, manipulate some global variable or so? And then, of course, if we run the code, we have the actual result, like, okay, this is what I expect, but this is what I got. And then the fifth thing is, how can I reproduce this? So we said before, testing, or a test, is some sort of documentation, which is only good if you know not what happens, but also how you can reproduce this. And for unit test, this is simple, because um, we have two templates. This is a PHP template. So we have the what is spread over the what class, and then the what method. And then we have what should it do, like here is in the name, so my whatever object, when I call this function, it should do this and that. And here we have the expected value, if we get some value, we have the actual value, and then we have some assertion, so because they should have some relationship, they should be the same, they should equal, they should be, one thing should be contained in the other, or whatever. And now, I'm just, yeah, I can show this here, this is the JavaScript equivalent, um, before we had PHP units, this is using Jest, um, the fifth question, or the, the answer to the fifth question, how can you reproduce this, this is actually in the actual right side. So, however you created the actual result, and maybe also all the lines before, if you needed to set up things, this is how you reproduce this. So you call one function, this is the unit that you want to test, and maybe you have to do some preparation, all of this is how you can reproduce the test. All right. Um, who did set up all the things that they think they should have? Or maybe who, who did not? Who has still problems setting things up? Like Composer install? Um, can Anarchula? Anyone else? Problems in, yeah, Gary? Okay, so we're just gonna fix, uh, make sure everybody's on. But uh, we're gonna start uh, with, with, uh, with the exercises. So. Um, the way we have it structured is a bit uh, kind of a game, so we're going to go with level one. Uh, you're going to be given uh, broken code that, uh, that you're going to have to fix. So the goal here is to uh, really familiarize yourself with the testing frameworks, whether you use, whether you want to learn about JavaScript uh, with Jest or, uh, or PHP with PHP unit. Um, and you want to be able to interpret, to, to figure out what is the testing output telling you about these errors. And you want to debug and fix that code. And this is important. So in the first exercise, you only read test code. You don't write test code, and you don't change something in the test. The tests are correct, but the failure is because the actual production code, there is some issue with it. Okay, so um, you will write test code later from exercise two on, but this is only reading the test, reading the output, and then trying to fix the actual collection code. Yeah, uh, and really, um, it's to understand what I was talking about earlier, which is uh, thinking about uh, your future self or what somebody else, uh, I didn't even uh, talk about that, but you might also be required to fix code that somebody else wrote. Uh, and sometimes it can be hard to understand what somebody was doing. That's why documentation is important, but also that's why testing is important, because the test will tell you what the person was expecting to happen, and you can make sure that this happens again, or you can question whether this should have been the case in the first place. Um, is Everybody uh, ready to go? Uh, I see I may still uh, helping, but uh, if you want to do the 
the first exercise with PHP, uh, you can run this command, and this is the command to run for JavaScript. And you'll find the tests here. Um, yeah, yeah, just a second. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's my bad. Yeah, it's shift. Shift. Everything's broken. Shift space. Shift. shift. You're going. We're still going for it. <laughs> okay, there we go. This is the code that you have to run. Um, this is also what you should be able to see in the readme of the repository. So maybe have this open in Yeah, the there's a readme also in the yeah. repository also that will tell you how to uh, run both these tests. Also with documentation, references to documentation, which we also have included in some of the test files. But um, the readme is hopefully helpful. So what you should do, if what you should see, um, is everybody uh, ready for us to go forward? Or is anybody not ready for we us to go? Yeah, it's that's that's negative. We'll go the opposite. Okay. Um, we'll wait a bit. But what you should be seeing, and we have slides to, to show this in a bit, but right now you should just be seeing a lot of red. <laughs> uh, because the idea here is that we've given you code that actually is written, tests that are written, and the idea here is to for you to, to to be able to read what the testing framework is telling you about that code so that you can go and fix it. Yeah, so again, this is to be seen at the readme, so um, we can move yeah. on now, I guess. So this is where you can find the, the test code for the PHP exercise. Um, so this is what you should be... Yeah, sure. You, you made this mess. I made this mess, actually, yeah, so you can blame me for everything. Um, so this is what you're going to see uh, with the PHP code if you run this, uh, the command that we saw just now. Um, and we're just going to step through the first test and, and see what's, what's happening here. So uh, the goal of the test was to uh, figure out uh, whether so, what we're doing with this with this code is that we want to add a special error code. So, who's done custom errors on the login page? Uh, so, the idea here is that we're trying to add this custom error code on uh, for the login page and make sure that it it's the filter works and adds the code as as needed. So. Uh, you can pro so the first step is we have an empty array that we pass to our filter. And what we're saying is that we want to assert that uh, in the array there is the workshop error code after. Uh, so what we did, um, okay, so that's the current code, yeah, okay. Um, and so this is our error code right now. And you might notice that it, we added a typo. So uh, it shouldn't have been workshops. It should have been workshop. And if you add this and you remove the S, you'll see that now one of your tests is passing again. Yeah, now we have also a JavaScript example. Um, for JavaScript, because we have JavaScript classes, JavaScript modules, we have sometimes two or three files. So, okay, can you go uh, one slide back? Um, I took an example from... Oh. No! <laughs> just, just arrow up. Uh, one, once more. So from this file, I took one test as an example. And uh, another second. So this is what we can see in the um, terminal as the problem. Um, maybe you're able to spot it here, but let's have a look at the test. So the test um, takes something, it comes from wherever, and then we just pick off some property, and then we want that property to be that string. And this fails because this is how the actual code looks like. Um, and yeah, there's a typo. 
So it's not lorem ipsum, it's lorem ipsma. If you fix that, then this test should not fail any longer. Um, yeah, and now it's up to you. So head over to exercise one for PHP or exercise one for JavaScript. And I'm, I think we should give you 15, maybe 20 minutes or 50 minutes um, to... 11 minus 17. Yeah, yeah. Until 11. You uh, if you have problems or questions or uh, questions, comments, whatever throughout, just uh, ask for TAs or us. So, and have fun with the first exercise. Um. I should also mention there's instructions inside the exercise file at the top as well. We put a lot of documentation there. So um, if you have que still questions after that, uh, you can wait by the TA or at us. If you have any questions at any time, you can just raise your hand and we'll come and see you.
Yeah, but um, just just as a note, um, we we only have these three uh, extension cords, unfortunately, for for power. So if you if your laptop's already low or you want to charge it, uh, you should do it now in case somebody else later needs it. Um, just wanted to clarify something because uh, Gary just mentioned it. Um, it, it. It's a failure on my part. Um, if the the goal here is to fix the production code, uh, not to fix the test. So the the error is really in the production code. So you should, and that should be in general what you should expect from testing. Like you should expect that the test is the one that's right and what you wrote is wrong. <laughs> so. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify that because that was a, actually a really good question.
We still have about five minutes left. I just wanted to see uh, who's done, if anybody's done so far with the exercises. Okay.
Something is not not right. Maybe your test is today, or maybe the code is complex. All right, so we're we're out of time uh, for this first exercise, but. Um, before we, we proceed, I just uh, wanted to talk a bit about what, again, what the goal was here, um, and ask if anybody has questions as well. But uh, really, the goal here was really to make you make you familiar with the testing frameworks that we're, we're going to use throughout the rest of, of this workshop, and to understand what that testing framework is telling you about tests that are not working so that you can fix, uh, you can figure out what's broken and how to fix it. Um, so um, before we move on, I wanted to see uh, if anybody had questions about this first exercise that maybe the TAs didn't answer or did you, want, you wanted to ask uh, so that everybody could hear out. Okay. All right. Uh, please also know that you can just come and find us today or tomorrow also like you don't have to ask questions here and then there's no yeah. chance this is totally wrong so we're here so yeah we're on we're all on Twitter they're all written at the bottom as well um, so even after work camp Europe is done you can always <laughs> we're always we're always around for questions um, so uh, without further ado we're gonna we're gonna move on to the next uh, exercise. Um, and yeah, so, okay, so now that we're a bit more familiar with uh, PHP unit or Jest, uh, what we want to do now is familiarize yourself with what we call assertions. So assertions is just a, a, a term that is used in, in testing to say, I expect this. Um, and what you want to do uh, here is uh, we're going to give you partially written tests where some of the assertions are missing. So what you want to be, um, no, I'm going to keep it back a bit, uh, just a bit more. But um, what you want to really understand here is you want to be able to look at the code that you have and figure out what am I trying to, when we were talking earlier about testable code, you want to f figure out what am I trying to test here? What are, what, are you, what are the outcomes out of this code that I want to make sure do not break in the future? Because that's what the goal of an assertion is, is to make sure, for example, that if a, a method returns true or false, that I expect this to be true. And the, that's what the assertion means. So uh, there's various different types of assertions. So you can test whether uh, true or false are simple ones, whether it's null. Uh, but you can even go more complicated things like whether an array contains a specific key uh, or things like that. So uh, the goal here is to familiarize yourself with all these different types of assertions and to create the ones that are missing. Um, yeah, so we mentioned <coughs> So with PHP, uh, we link to assertions. There's also links to documentation inside uh, yeah. the ex exercises as well. So now you can move on. Um, so to run to run your test, similar as before, uh, you just want to run uh, with the test suite exercise two or just with exercise two. 
Um, and we're just going to walk through uh, the first example. So here, um, we are testing that uh, we want to make sure that our plugin removes the ability to uh, to update the removes the capability of updating plugins from from a user, uh, and we're missing an assertion here. So what are we what are we expecting here? Uh, if you move on to the next slide, so if you look at the code here, uh, we're calling unset twice. So we're Obviously, in the first example, we were looking at install plugins. Now we're looking at update plugins. So what are we expecting uh, after that is that if you uh, move on, uh, yeah. So what we're looking here, and that's what I was talking about, about the keys, but uh, what we're making sure here is that we want the update plugins key in our array to be gone. Uh, that's what tells WordPress that um, you can update a plugin that the user has that kind of capability. So for our, our code to work correctly, that key needs to be uh, gone from the array. So to test that, we are calling the assert array ha not has key, which is a bit of a mouthful, but, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's testing frameworks for you. Um, but what this does is that it checks the caps array that we get back from our method and it ensures that that caps array does not have the update plugins key. And this is just one way to write the test. So you could also yeah. assert false and then check um, is set or something else. Yeah. So it's one way to do this. Um, now we have the JavaScript part. And again, I just picked one file. So in the exercise 2 folder, there are three or four files. I picked the array test for now. Um, this is the current test. So we call map objects to property with data, which is a string. We pass the property name, which is children. And then we expect that the actual thing, so the return value of our function call, is to be what? So let's have a look at the code. Um, we have a function that takes any arguments, and if this happens to be an array, it tries to reduce or map any items in the array that are objects and have a specific property to the value of that property. So in our case, we don't pass the first test, because the, the first condition, because if we pass a string that we had before, this is not an array. So this should return data, the first argument, just as we passed it. So this would be the complete test. So we call the function with something that is not, a, not an array, so we expect that to be returned as is. And now it's up to you, exercise two. Yeah, so we'll, we'll stop at uh, half past 11. So you have uh, about 20, 20, a bit more than 20 minutes to, to work on this.
There's a typo in the first uh, exercise, in the first problem. Uh, it says every day, and then in the message it says every minute. So just be aware that it's every day for just the message.
There's going to be a break after this exercise, so uh, so don't worry about yeah. that. Um, if you want to go get some water or go to the bathroom or, or things like that, um, just just a sh quick show of hands. Uh, like who's who's done with this exercise? Okay. But it, the, does anybody want more than uh, five more minutes for to finish this? Okay, then um, there's still five more minutes, and then after that, we'll, we're going to move on to the next exercise. We'll just present it, and then we're going to give you more time to do that exercise so, as well so that you can go to the bathroom, take your break, uh, come back, and work on it uh, as well.
Yeah. <laughs> Until physics tells us otherwise, uh, that's not going to change. Uh, unless you have a leap second. But that's another problem entirely. But, uh, but that's the idea here, is to make sure that this is okay. So the goal here was really to look at your code to realize that one, you needed that key to be there, and two, that this key needed that specific value. So that was the, the idea with this exercise. So we're gonna move on to exercise three. So um, now we introduce dependencies. So what we had before in our code is we had one unit and we tested one aspect of the unit. Maybe it had multiple aspects or maybe it only had one. And now we have dependencies. So um, we have to make sure that we fake these dependencies because we only want to test our unit in isolation. This was the second and third concept of unit testing. So we want to define dummy pieces of code like functions or objects that we can control. So we still have to make these dependencies available because otherwise PHP parser will fail or whatever. Um, but we want to make them do what we want them to do, which is not what the actual thing does, but something that makes sense for our test. So we have to take care of two things. We want no errors because our code references things like functions or classes that are not there, so we have to define them somewhere so that our language setup is as it should be. And we want all other units that our unit that we want to test, the subject under test, that it uses to be fake. So the learning objectives here are, um, there are mocking tools. Depending on what testing framework you're using, um, you can mock already with your framework, or you want or have to use an additional library. Also, um, you have to understand what you have to mock, and how to mock things. Like, if you have control over something, it's up to you to make it do what you want to do. And sometimes this is completely not what, you, what the actual code looks like, but it's the simplest thing that makes sense for your test. And also, of course, um, you have to create these mocks now. So we still have incomplete test code for you, so that you see what we set up. There is maybe an assertion, maybe not. Maybe the assertion is incomplete. Maybe we also created parts of mocking something, and you have to complete that. Uh, running the test is just like before, so now we have exercise three. And here's your PHP example. Yeah. This is something that you will find in exercise three. So uh, you see here something new, which is this monkey function when and just return. So this is a tool in PHP that allows you to mock uh, the function of WordPress. Because maybe you see that in the test, you were seeing in exercise one and two, there were no WordPress function. It was all about PHP. There was no WordPress function. But now, in exercise three, which will deal with pretty much real world code in WordPress, you will see, of course, WordPress function. And the problem with this is that we are not loading WordPress. So if WordPress is not loaded, and we are gonna using WordPress function. Of course, PHP unit will complain with undefined function and will do a fatal error. So we need a way to define this function to do what we want to do, as Torsten said before. So uh, Monkey, um, Brain Monkey is a tool in PHP that allow you to do that. So basically, this is one example of the code you will find, the production code you find. So you will find get user data, that is a WordPress function. You will find get user team member page, which is a custom function. It's re uh, that make use of WordPress code. And you also find WP delete post. These functions are not defined and WordPress is not loaded, so we need a way to fake them. So to tell our um, PHP uh, framework, so PHP unit, that what this function does. Yeah, again, in this test, 
we see that we are telling via monkey function when that when this function is called then we just return true and then we assert as we saw before that calling the lead member page with 42 will return one but if we go back and if get user data return uh, zero uh, return one sorry then this will pass because this will not match it and then we have this function that uh, is defined <laughs> no it's not defined so the test will fail what we need to do is uh, we have a slide okay? yeah so basically what we need to do is to tell the test that when this function is called we should return now at that point if this function just return now then this assertion will be true because if we go back to the production code when this function return no this condition is met and so return one is met so this is about mocking mocking is about faking the function that is not defined to make the condition that we want so the test pass so we are simulating the behavior of WordPress or it could be another third party library which is not included in our code and we make the test pass this way we are only testing our code and not WordPress code not third party code uh, we have the same for JavaScript and Tosin will introduce to that yeah so for JavaScript I chose the index test JS file um, the test, the incomplete tests which I uh, picked looks like this. So we started always before with describe and test. So we take something from the global scope that we have mocked for you already, so you don't have to take care about that. It's been included in the test file at the top. We pick a function, then uh, we uh, want to make sure that this thing, the register block type, has been called with something because this is what happens uh, when we include this um, the index file so it directly runs there's no function to execute if you include this file then something happens directly uh, so what we need to do here is because if you go to the actual code so we have our blocks we have this is group work code uh, we have two blocks lorem ipsum and a progress block and they live in different files and we import them into here this is a dependency. We don't want them to be real because maybe things will change over time which makes our test break, which is not directly related to them. Tests should only break if the unit you're testing changes. Um, in the production code, we take this register block type function and then we pass an array of the two blocks and then we call register block type with the name and the settings property of the two blocks. So if you go back to the... Oh, oh, oh. So what is missing here is um, this should have been called with two things. Um, I just test for one block here. So I'm mocking one block. Um, this here is mocking with jest itself. So we don't need an additional library here. So what this means is if in our production code we find somewhere an import of this piece of path, file path, um, then we just run a function. And this function will return a plain object with two properties, name and settings. And I made them up. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot pass in variables because this is how Jest is uh, defined. So I cannot declare a constant name, whatever, and use it here and also use it there. For this example, I have to duplicate um, the hard-coded values. So if you now um, go to the complete example, I see that the name of the lorem ipsum block is lorem dash ipsum and that the settings is an object with the lorem key and ipsum value. So this is exactly what I expect this register block type to be called with. This does not mean that it's only being called one time with this set of data and is also not ensuring that this is the first time it's been called with. It just ensures this function has been called at least once with this set of arguments. And now we have uh, so it's uh, 11.40, uh, we're going to keep going until 12.15, uh, 12.15, 12 
So you can uh, work on the exercise now if you want. You can go for a break, uh, go to the bathroom and whatnot uh, as well. So maybe be here at uh, 10 after 2, 12, 10. Yeah, 12, 10, we'll, we'll, do, we'll start uh, making a recap. If, so be back by then.
you want to hit, you want to hit this part and you have to one hand because the one is so big, it turns one. So you want to mock the first one, skip the position and the second one and make the condition true. So you want to check the condition and then you turn the sound in the magic. Did you go back? So uh, this condition. So you want this to be true, so you need to return false. And then return the back should be one. Because you that specific coordinate. What happens if I have to move this part? So I want to leave this part away. Yeah, um, you you mock only what for this immediate, immediate okay. external okay. to the function you mock. Otherwise, when when you don't mock this one, but mock the exists or something, so when the test fails, you cannot be sure whether the bug is in this code or in this code. And if I want to mock for this part, so I will mock just uh, separately this method. Yeah, if you want to test this method. Then you will mock the get user way, then you get the right picture. Uh, yes, I understand. Okay, so I have this test. Uh, How is it going to be? Yeah, basically, the, um, the files are being loaded. Uh, this is done through the bootstrap uh, configuration of the So if you go to. It's probably part of the uh, ultimate. But, um, if you go um, to see what the ultimate does, you go into composer.jp file. Yeah, it's part of the Thank you. 
Um, is anybody done with the current exercise? Okay, so we're gonna we're probably just gonna continue with this exercise um, because there's only uh, 25 minutes left. So we'll, we might just go at the end go over the last one briefly, but we'll post solutions over the weekend that you can refer to. But for now, we'll just keep going with with this exercise if uh, you're all still working on it.
which lets the code help in an issue there. Here it is. You can change up to anything you want by putting the other hand on that. Here it is. 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 Here it is.
will never know what we have happened. You know, I just think my budget is going to be exhausted. They should have been taking you in months. We have to wait until the first time we could have had a budget for the first time. So the worst is the worst. The worst is the worst. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, uh, we're gonna have to slowly wrap this up uh, because it's lunch soon, so yay for that. Uh, so we, we didn't get to the last exercise, but we're gonna talk about it briefly uh, in a second, but I just wanted to go a bit over uh, what the goal of this exercise is, because this one, if going from exercise two to exercise three is a very uh, big leap uh, because we're we're asking a lot out of you uh, in terms of understanding what mocking is, what the mocking tools are, uh, what you should create mocks for, uh, and all that stuff. Um, but mocking is is almost it's one of the cornerstone of of unit testing because um, because with unit testing the goal is really to test your code. It's not to test somebody else's code. And the only way to get around this necessity of, of using other people's code but not really is mocks. And mocks are there really to, to abstract that away and let you be, okay, well, I don't really care what WordPress does, but I expect that if WordPress returns, for example, if you get, get user data and it returns to me a user, well, this is what I expect my code to do with this user that WordPress returns to me. Um, it, we're not, the point of unit testing is not to figure out if WordPress is working or not, it's to figure out if what I'm doing is working. So mocking is really important for that. Um, we'll just talk briefly, uh, we'll just leave this slide and then move on to the, the the questions, or do we want to go through the example? Uh, yeah, we, no, no, okay. Yeah, so what the last example would have, uh, the last exercise would have been uh, is basically putting it all together. So we would have given you an empty, te an empty test with nothing. Uh, and you would have had to figure out what am I trying to do? So we, we still give you a hint, so we still have you know, the test name, you'll have a, you would have a description, but the goal here is to put it all together, to figure out, okay, what do I need to mock? What do I need to assert um, to, to, to validate my outcome of this test? Um, so that's what you would have done in exercise four. Uh, we'll post some solutions. Oh yeah, we, yeah, we can step through the PHP uh, example while you're going really fast, but uh, if you just go back, just to the, the brief, yeah, so we're, we're trying to simulate going here, so to return null. So what do we need to do to get there? So we need, we need, we need to first assert what we want at the end. So at the end, 
we want to know that if we call get team page with no user ID, we will get null back. Uh, but to do that, we need the get option function. So if we had gone back, what well, you don't have to do it, but uh, but if you had gone back, we call get option. So we need to simulate that. So that's where the mocking comes in. So we need to mock that because we're we're not using WordPress. Uh, we don't. Have in, even if you were using WordPress, you would have to simulate a database and put that data in. You don't want to do that. You ju you're just trying to simulate what would happen if I get, get an option. Uh, and your option returns zero uh, with, the t with the constant. And I think that's the, the entire test. And then that, because of that, because we return zero, it will return null. Yeah, basically uh, in the exercise for file, you will find uh, all these empty tests that allow you to test the whole uh, file. So you will find, I don't know, 10, 12 uh, tests. So you have a note to exercise <laughs> at home and try to find uh, the way to test. But uh, in the coming week, we will post on the repository the solution for the uh, all, all the things. So we will fix all the exercise. So if you want to do at home, you will be you will have a way to see uh, if you're stuck somewhere, what was the reason and why the tests were failing. So you have also work for home. Uh, I think that we have more five minutes or something. So. This is one expectation or one hope that I have, or that we three have. So um, I hope this is true or uh, true-ish. Do you have any questions that you think we should cover now? Yeah. Um, Do you maybe one mic yeah. around? And yeah. Do you have any suggestions for a course or whatever to dig deeper into the issue? Um, testing in general, testing for one language, or uh, in my case, PHP. Yeah, I expect tons of PHP unit courses to exist, but actually, I don't know one specifically. Um, sorry, um, do you like? Um, I, I think there should be video courses out there. There should be tutorials out there, but I don't know someone or some course uh, specifically that I can recommend. If you um, if you like to learn uh, by books <laughs> instead of courses, uh, there's a nice uh, and quite simple to uh, get started with, uh, and it's about Laravel. Laravel is a uh, framework, a PHP framework, and uh, there is a book which is called uh, Testing with Laravel or something like this, and it's by Jeffrey Way, it's the author. And he has a very big introduction regarding testing for PHP in general. And he will also introduce mockery and all the things that we saw. So in my opinion, that's a very good place to start with unit tests for PHP. So. Any other question? Uh, I was just uh, looking it up. Um, there is a book. Uh, I haven't read it, but... Uh, that's called um, Grumpy P Programmers Building Test Driven. Uh, there's a basically it's called GrumpyLearning.com, and uh, it's it's a writer that's written a lot about testing in general, and uh, specifically with PHP. Uh, to if you want to do more Laravel too, there's a there's a Adam Watam has like a video course called. Uh, test driven Laravel as well. So if you want to do that, uh, that's also an, a possibility. But um, in general, I'm writing a bit more about testing. I have code bases as well as, um, that you can take a look at if you have questions. But part of the problem or the, the technical aspect with, with these courses is that um, there is also a background in terms of programming that is required as well, so it's it's kind of tricky for the, the learning material, especially for WordPress specific uh, learning material. Yeah. Do you have another question? I was also thinking about that we maybe could tweet out um, 
other code bases like simple plugins that are fully tested, or at least there are, that there are um, some unit tests, JavaScript and PHP. And also, I think you can tweet out some references to other um, articles somewhere, like uh, on your blog, for example, yeah. or um, yes. uh, Gunders, for example. Yeah. Well, on my on my GitHub repo, there's a plugin called uh, Passwords Evolved, and that that is fully unit tested. Um, so if you want to look what it looks like, but it's also object oriented, so just keep that in mind as well. Um, so next question: um, Why a static double colon and not self or this arrow? Yeah, yeah um, static or self in this case makes no difference because the thing is uh, we are using assert true and all the other assert methods which are method in the class test case, the base class of unit test. If you go to see that class, all these methods are all static. So it's a good mood to use static, to call static methods with the double column and not the, the arrow. Uh, this is the code of PHP unit. Yeah. PHP unit, it's a static function, so you call it static. You can call it dynamically because PHP will not complain about that, but it's a good habit to use static function <laughs> as static function. I use this. <laughs> I use this, but I, I, I mean, if you look at the PHP unit documentation, I yeah. think it's still all, all this. Yeah. So it's really a question of, of preference and readability um, yeah. Yeah, more than anything else. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. There's one function file that yeah, just registers all the assertions as global functions. So if you do not want to have this or self or static, you can do that as well. You just have to make sure that um, in your bootstrap you include this function file for PHP. Yeah, but uh, this does not really work in uh, mockery because among yes. this function, there is a function which is called any, so like any, and this function any conflicts with the function of uh, mockery, which is called any. And so this is why we use namespace, by the way, <laughs> to avoid this conflict. Any other um, question? And just a thing, uh, the Bray Monkey library that we use today, it's a library that I wrote. It's open source, it's on GitHub, so if you have questions uh, or you find problems, don't hesitate to write an issue on GitHub. Uh, I try to answer as soon as possible. So, so there seems to be a link that was talking about some video tutorial. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so I uh, just to repeat for the, the video, um, there's also lynda.com for uh, video courses for PHP unit. But I they're not WordPress specific, right? No. 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 So I'm I'm personally not aware of uh, any course or book on testing that is more I think there is uh, one uh, by uh, Know the Code. Uh, Tonya? Uh, Tonya? Uh, Tonya has one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there, is, there is a test about unit testing in general and also unit testing with brain monkey. So okay. you can write the book. Yeah, I, I mean, if I do it, it'll probably be a video course more than, I think, than a book, but yeah. Um, but if you have quite, but like I, I mentioned it uh, personally, if you have any questions, I write a lot. <laughs> uh, and if you have any questions about testing or or things like that, you can reach me on Twitter. If it's a really good question and I feel like I should write about it, I will definitely write about it because um, I think testing is great and something that. Um, plugin developers should do more. Yeah. Uh, just uh, another question. Um, right, so what I'm wondering, right, now we're using a very purist definition of unit testing, right, where it has to be completely in isolation, and the assumption is that WordPress works as expected, um, as long as we Just give like it. PHP, for example, we don't test PHP. Right. Um, but in practice, there could still be instances where WordPress does not work as, as expected, or um, there's, there, there might be mistakes in the code or in the implementation, which means our tests are going to pass, but our application won't work anymore, right? 
So sorry, our first scenario, which we recommend instead of mocking every WordPress functionality, um, to instead use something like an in-memory database and use actual WordPress functions. Um, well, WordPress is a framework. There's some projects which should be tested individually. Mm -hmm. So if this is not working anymore, or if it's not working at all, there should be the failing tests. So you should not be concerned when you're unit testing whatever product, you should not be concerned with unit testing or actually testing on whatever level another project or library or so. Yeah, it's so. also true that he, uh, as when uh, Tosin showed you the V model about uh, software development, unit testing is only a part of testing. There is also acceptance testing and integration testing and end-to-end -end testing. When you write an application or a plugin, uh, you have all the right and maybe you should really write not only unit testing. Unit testing is about and helps you during development and during the factoring, but it's not the only way to write testing. Uh, integration testing, so when you actually load WordPress and you do the test, this is something that's absolutely valid and everyone should do, or it would be better if everyone would do that. So unit testing, you mock, but for the application or for the plugin, you want to make sure that it works. It's absolutely right to write also integration testing or even uh, I don't know end-to-end -end testing or browser testing to test that that specific class is added there. Even because WordPress code might change, so you need to change your code accordingly or and your mocks accordingly. This is something that happens in the real world. So unit testing don't make your code surely safe. So yeah. Yeah, to just um, expand a bit on that. Um, I personally, I think um, we as developers, um, the, the, I think unit testing in general is, is the better starting point for testing because one, it requires, it, it might, this might seem complicated to you to set up, but I can guarantee you that the other types of testing are even harder to set up because, for example, if you do integration would be what you were talking about where you want to see how your code behaves with WordPress itself. Well, that requires a database. It requires you to, to clean up the database after each test and, and things like that, which makes things a lot more complicated. Here, with unit tests, the beauty of it is that it's, it's all your stuff. Like, you're, you're testing your stuff. You don't have to worry too much about what WordPress is doing. Um, but obviously it can feel a bit scary to like just rely on what you think WordPress is gonna do versus what it actually will do. But really that's kind of the point here. And if if you look at the, the, the plugin I mentioned uh, earlier, Password Evolved, uh, like I added, a, it's still very basic, but I added acceptance testing. So I think acceptance testing versus integration is a better next step because with acceptance testing, you're really testing the behavior of WordPress as a whole. So you're like navigating true, true WordPress to, to do things. But yeah, exactly. You're doing the browser testing. You're testing everything. You're testing how your plugin's going to behave, or your team's going to behave inside WordPress, and that's what, you, as a whole. So like not only like in the browser, but also inside WordPress. So I think that's a better next step if you want. But it it also makes things a lot more complicated because now you need. You need a database. You need WordPress to be installed. You need like your plugin to be installed. You, may, you might need data inside, like and all that stuff. So, yeah, exactly. Browser sim simulator and, and and things like that. So it's really a step of all. Of, it's still a step behind, but it's it's a useful step for sure. Um, definitely, if you're a, a plugin shop or something like that, you 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 will want that as well. But they serve two different purposes. And the thing with unit testing is um, unit tests are the only level or the only kind of test that give you, if you write the test correctly, the absolute truth. Um, if you test some integration of two pieces and both are broken, the integration might work. Like if you have some stupid example where you calculate something and you have a plus function and it does not add the two, uh, the two values but also adds one more for whatever reason. And you have a minus function, it subtracts one more. If you just test add for three minus seven, whatever, um, the result is correct because there are two 
for two defects that are um, masking each other. If you test each unit individually, you know for whatever reason you call minus or plus, it's totally wrong from the first place. Which means that, like I said before, unit testing is the base for integration tests. Or you can build your integration tests on top of unit tests, where you only concern yourself with the actual interaction between units. Okay, so uh, we're now past the 15 minutes before lunch. No questions here, so um, thanks a lot for showing up. This was uh, a huge fun to us, I think, hopefully for you too. Um, if you have questions, come find us here or tweet or wherever. Thank you.